This lesson is going to be a very basic overview of the family editor function inside of Revit. This is going to go over the user interface as well as some of the tools you have inside of the family editor. After this lesson, we'll be getting into some more complex and detailed modeling up of families and we create a parametric table family as well as a stool and some other things as well, which is gonna be really, really cool. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as four hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there. So first things first, to create a new family, what we need to do is go up to the file tab, click on this arrow here under new family. And this is gonna ask us to open up a family template. Once you've located your language, then you can have a look through the templates available to you in the Revit library. You can see that there's a lot of different types of Revit families that come with the actual program. You can see at the top here, you've got a metric baluster. So if you're creating a baluster, then it's going to have a template already set up for creating balusters and casework. If you want a wall-based casework where you're creating furniture against the wall or something, then you've got that there. What we want to do is just go down to a metric generic template, something that we can just start modeling stuff up in. If we scroll down, you're going to see a few different generic models here. This one is just the most basic. So I'm going to open this up by double clicking it and you're going to see a very basic family editor with two reference planes. These two reference planes are intersecting and this shows where the placement point of the family is. You can see that this is very much like the normal Revit editor, but there's a few different things. You can see in the project browser, it's still got a bunch of different views that you'll have for your family. And you can see that it automatically opens up the reference level. And this is basically the ground level. So this is a plan view. You're looking at it top down. And then you've got your left and your front views, which are, you know, looking at it in elevation. And then you've got your 3D view that's opened up for you. But then you also have some other views in your project browser to the side here. You should be familiar with that. What might be a little bit different to you is the ribbon at the top. And you're going to see a new tab, which is the create tab. And this is where you're going to be creating all of the different shapes and geometries inside of the family editor. So let me just quickly go over what these do, because once you know all the tools available to you, it's going to make life a lot easier and you're going to be able to actually use all of the tools available to you in Revit. First up, you've got solid extrusions. This creates a 3D solid by extruding a 2D shape or a profile. So as an example, I'm going to click on this and you're going to see the normal modifier create tab come up and you can create any shape that you want. If I create an extrusion on the floor plan, then you're gonna see it being extruded up. If I create a rectangle here, let's just make this 1000 by 1000, specify an extrusion end. Let's make this 1000 as well. So we've got a 1000 tool box and it's starting at the reference level, which is that ground level. What we've done is created a square profile, which is now being extruded 1000 millimeters tall in the up direction, considering this is on the floor plan. So if I go to a 3D view, you can see there's our profile in 3D. And you can also assign a material to this. If this was a aluminium extruded profile, let's say, then you could assign an aluminium material to it. You can just go ahead and click on finish edit mode. And you're going to see that it's extruded that in the upwards direction. It's a 1000 by 1000 by 1000 squared box. Afterwards, you still have the ability to change all of these sides. You can extrude them out. You can extrude them up and you can extrude them whichever way that you want. So this is very good for basic extruded elements. However, this isn't suitable for different shapes and forms such as curves or sweeped forms. So I'm gonna go back to my reference level. What you can see is these intersecting reference planes. If we were to load this into the project now, you would see that you would be placing it from this point, which is a bit random. What we'd actually want to do is, you know, put this into the center of those two points. So if I click MV to move this and move that to the center of those to reference planes. This is then where we'd be placing that family from. So let's move on to the next tool. If I come back up to the create tab, you're gonna see the blend tool. So this creates a solid 3D shape that changes along its length, blending from a starting shape to an ending shape. So this is pretty much creating an extrusion, but it's blending between two different profiles. So let's give this a shot. If we click on blend, what we can do is specify the first profile. At the moment, this is editing the bottom profile. So let's make this a circle. We're just gonna make this 1000 millimeters in radius. Click on edit top. Let's say we made this a square and this square was, I don't know, 2200 by 2500. 
and I'm just going to sort of move this over the top of that circle. Let's have a look in the 3D view. What's happening here? If we click finish edit mode, you can see that it's just moved up 250 mils. However, if we pull this up, we can line it up with that current one. And you can see that first profile has blended with that rectangle. That's pretty cool. You can do a lot with that. So the next thing we're going to look at are sweeps. We're going to just skip over revolve for the moment, but we'll look at a basic sweep. What the sweep tool does is creates a 3D shape by sweeping a 2D profile along a path. If we click on sweep, you've got a few options here. You can either sketch a path or pick a path. So let's just start off with sketching a path. We're just going to click on that button let's say our path does something like this, just a little L shape. You can see this little green line here. This is the reference plane for the profile. What I mean by profile is if we finish the edit mode of the sweep and now we want a profile that will follow this line. So this could be a circle for a handrail or it could be a square or it could be really anything you want. So that's the first step to creating a sweep. You want to sketch or pick a path. And then what you want to do is move to the right and select a profile. You can either select a profile from the drop down menu or load in a profile. A few examples of these, if we go to the library, you should see an option for profiles in your library. Let's say that there was a slab profile. You can load this in and it will create this shape as a profile. So what I mean by that is now that we've loaded in that profile, we can come to the drop down menu and we can then select one of these profiles we just loaded in. And you can see that's our profile. It's on those reference planes and it's going to use this profile along this sweep. If we click the green tick, you'll see that. So it's just swept that profile along that line, that path. Otherwise we can come back to selecting the profile and we can choose by sketch. And then if we click edit profile, we can then draw in a profile that we want this line to follow. So if we just click the green ticks on them, that's our profile that's been swept. Pretty cool, hey? So let's go back to reference level. You've then got the solid revolve tool, which is creating that 3D shape by sweeping a 2D profile around an axis. So let's click on that. So you can see you've got two options here. You can either create a boundary line or the axis line. So the boundary line is sketching lines to define the boundary of the revolve. So this would be essentially creating the profile of the revolve. The axis line is showing where that's going to be placed from. So let's say we were to create a boundary line. Let's just create something like this here. If we click the green tick, it's going to say that the axis of revolution is not specified yet. So we'll continue, click on axis line, and then we'll just create a line, which is a reference plane down the middle like this. Now, if we click the green tick, you're going to see it's just revolved around that line. If we go to a 3D view. That's the shape we've just created and it's revolved around it. So I'm just going to show you how that works. You can see that's the axis line there in 3D and this is the profile we just created. So you can see it's just done a full circle around that axis line of that profile. Very cool. So let's go back to the reference level again. The last option is the swept blend and this is a mix of the blend tool and the sweep tool. So you're first going to have to again sketch a path. So if we just create a, let's create a curve. If we do something like that, you're going to then see two profiles that you need to specify. So if we'll click the green tick on this on the path, we're happy with that. And you can now see there are two profiles that we need to create. Profile one, and this would be profile two. So if we select profile one, and we create this as the slab edge thickened. And then we go for profile two. Let's say sketch this one in. We'll go to a 3D view. Let's just create this as even larger slab edge that we did before. And you're going to see it blend between these two shapes. If we click the green tick twice, there you've got that curved blend between two profiles, which is also very, very cool. Now, one final tool you've got as well here, the void form. So you've now got options of extruding or blending or revolving or sweeping any of these things as well you'll be creating negative forms. So void forms, which are then being taken from a solid form. For example, if we go back to the reference level, 
we create a void extrusion. Let me just put this off to the side like this. And this is going up the same height as the extrusion. What you're gonna see is that it's going to cut out that shape with that void form. So again, you can use this on any of the other shapes and you can change it like you would with any extrusion. We can also create a void extrusion through this shape as well. So if I do the same thing, this is the blended object. You're then gonna see that's being cut out as well. So it's not just limited to void extrusions on extrusions. You can void any of these shapes. So that's a basic rundown of the family editor inside of Revit. And there's a few extra things that we'll start touching on when we actually start creating and modeling up our furniture inside of this family editor. In the next lesson, we're going to go over how to create a parametric family in Revit. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as four hours of ad-free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there.